A growing number of 2020 Democratic hopefuls will not attend this year's American Israel Public Affairs uh, Committee policy conference. An unprecedented shift is happening in U.S. electoral politics. Almost none of the currently declared 2020 presidential candidates from the Democratic Party appeared at the American Israel Public Affairs Committee's annual national conference, including Bernie Sanders, Elizabeth Warren, and Beto O'Rourke. AIPAC describes itself as a, quote, bipartisan organization of U.S. citizens committed solely to strengthening, protecting, and promoting the U.S.-Israel relationship. But its critics claim that AIPAC has gotten in the way of effective U.S. political and economic involvement in the Middle East and created a culture in Washington that casts suspicion on anyone who hesitates to pledge support for an Israeli state that continues to carry out systematic war crimes against Palestinians. Recently, the progressive U.S. advocacy group Move On called on 2020 candidates to boycott APAC's conference, accusing the organization of spending millions to try and sabotage President Obama's 2015 Iran deal, mainstreaming anti-Muslim racism, giving platform to human rights abusers like Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, and refusing to condemn the anti-Semitism of the Trump administration. Until now, APAC has enjoyed bipartisan support from Democrats and Republicans. Well, hello, APAC! The founding of the State of Israel was one of the greatest political achievements of the 20th century. And we will always reject the notion that Zionism is racism. Appearing at the conference to pledge loyalty to both APAC and Israel has been standard operating procedure for representatives from both major parties for decades. President Trump and I couldn't be more proud to stand with all of you today, tomorrow, and always, to strengthen the ties that bind America and Israel. But following Congresswoman Ilhan Omar's widely publicized criticism of Israel, a debate has erupted over the group's influence on U.S. politics and its ability to shape American support for Israel by funneling money into political campaigns. I want to ask, why is it okay for me to talk about the influence of the NRA, of fossil fuel industries or big pharma and not talk about a powerful lobbying group that is influencing policy. The debate has also opened a deep rift within the Democratic Party itself with senior Democrats such as Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer trying to silence Omar while simultaneously pledging their continued support for Israel. When someone looks at a neo-Nazi rally and sees some very fine people among its company, we must call it out. When there's someone suggests that money drives support for Israel, we must call it out. APAC legally cannot directly contribute to political campaigns, but it is by far the most significant pro-Israel voice in America, spending more than $3.5 million on lobbying in 2018. It does, however, serve as a key way to connect candidates with major funders. The annual conference is a way for candidates and elected representatives to declare their loyalty to the U.S.-Israel alliance and, in turn, have the opportunity to meet high-level donors. In total, the Israeli lobby and its affiliates spent more than $22 million on lobbying and contributions during the 2018 election cycle. While the absence of key Democratic presidential candidates has been called a boycott, some have been quick to blame scheduling conflicts or have taken their meetings with AIPAC outside of the conference. And the Israel lobby and its loyalists are definitely feeling the pressure. Senior Democrats who attended APAC's conference used the opportunity to distance themselves from their younger colleagues who are critical of Israel. By the way, there are 62 freshman uh, Democrats. You hear me? 62, not three. But the symbolism of Democrats not appearing at APAC is undeniable. For progressives, an association with the Israel lobby is becoming more and more of a liability.